Right, so the United Nations have issued a press release which makes for rather interesting reading on the matter of arms exports to Israel. Of course, we know from the International Court of Justice case that South Africa brought against Israel that there is now a plausible case for genocide having been demonstrated. Still to be judged on the merits of their case, of course, but given the interim orders handed down by the ICJ on Israel back on January 26th, and given that Israel have not followed any of them, indeed they have arrogantly boasted that they will take no notice of them, it is pretty clear that they are violating international law and don't care who calls it out, because they'll just turn around to their accusers and infer they are terrorist sympathisers and anti-Semites, because it is what they always do. So the UN, which the ICJ is of course a branch of, have issued a statement that every country still supplying arms to Israel really needs to sit up and take notice of. Right, so Israel and those provisional orders that the International Court of Justice laid it down last month. Israel said they'd ignore them, and it seems they very much have. Israel have until Monday to report to the ICJ on what they've done to meet the terms of this legal ruling, and, well, it doesn't look like they're going to be too bothered to send anything in. The dog ate our homework. Is that going to be their excuse? But it isn't so much what Israel are not doing right now that is at the crux of this new United Nations statement, but those aiding and abetting them instead. Those providing Israel with weaponry and military aid, because this statement is a none too subtle shot across their bows to reconsider what they are doing. This statement has come from the OHCHR, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, which has basically demanded arms sales to Israel stop immediately. The UN telling all nations selling arms to Israel cease with immediate effect. Here's part of what it says. Any transfer of weapons or ammunition to Israel that would be used in Gaza is likely to violate international humanitarian law and must cease immediately, UN experts warn today. All states must ensure respect for international humanitarian law by parties to an armed conflict as required by 1949 Geneva Conventions and customary international law, the experts said. States must accordingly refrain from transferring any weapon or ammunition or parts for them if it is expected given the facts or past patterns of behaviour, that they would be used to violate international law. Such transfers are prohibited even if the exporting state does not intend the arms to be used in violation of the law, or does not know with certainty that they would be used in such a way, as long as there is a clear risk, they said. Over 29,313 Palestinians have been killed and 69,333 injured in Gaza since the 7th of October 2023, the majority being women and children. Israel has repeatedly failed to comply with international law, the experts said. The experts noted that states' parties to the arms trade treaty have additional treaty obligations to deny arms exports if they know that the arms would be used to commit international crimes or if there is an overriding risk that the arms transferred could be used to commit serious violations of international humanitarian law. European Union member states are further bound by EU arms export control law. The need for an arms embargo on Israel is heightened by the International Court of Justice's ruling on the 26th of January 2024 that there is a plausible risk of genocide in Gaza and the continuing serious harms to civilians since then, the experts say. The Genocide Convention of 1948 requires states' parties to employ all means reasonably available to them to prevent genocide in another state as far as possible. This necessitates halting arms exports in the present circumstances, the experts said. The experts welcomed the suspension of arms transfers to Israel by Belgium, Italy, Spain, the Netherlands and the Japanese company Itochu Corporation. The European Union also recently discouraged arms exports to Israel. The experts urged other states to immediately halt arms transfers to Israel, including export licenses and military aid. The United States and Germany are by far the largest arms exporters and shipments have increased since 7th of October 2023. Other military exporters include France, the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia. State officials involved in arms exports may be individually criminally liable for aiding and abetting any war crimes, crimes against humanity or acts of genocide, the experts said. All states under the principle of universal jurisdiction and the International Criminal Court may be able to investigate and prosecute such crimes. Arms companies contributing to the production and transfer of arms to Israel and businesses investing in those companies bear their own responsibility to respect human rights, international humanitarian law and international criminal law. They have not publicly demonstrated the heightened human rights due diligence required of them and accordingly risk complicity in violations, the experts said.
International law does not enforce itself, the expert said. All states must be complicit, must not be complicit in international crimes through arms transfers. They must do their part to urgently end the unrelenting humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. A lot of experts saying a lot of things in that statement you will have noticed. Uh, these are all listed at the at the bottom of the statement itself, if you care to look on the UN's own website, they comprise many of the UN special rapporteurs relating to various aspects of law and human rights as well as some others, so from other areas of expertise. In effect, though, any supply of arms to Israel is in violation of international law, purely based on the possibility that such arms could be used against Gaza. Of course, Israel are also bombing Syria and Lebanon right now as well, but that simply shows how much they care about peace in the region, frankly. Zionism in Gaza and elsewhere is how it ought to be described, to be honest, and how nations aforementioned who are still doing so are enabling the continued Zionism in Palestine, or of Palestine and beyond. The occupation, the invasion, the genocide, and the political movement behind that that is Zionism. Israel can have its right to defend itself, but not at the expense of enacting Zionism, in Gaza. Phraseology is one thing though. It's not the crux of this statement because what is, is that if you're supplying weapons to Israel, no matter whether they use them in Gaza or not, is against humanitarian law, against the Geneva Conventions, all those nations are signatories do. This extends to whether you know they are being used or not, but if you do know, then you're violating the arms treaties too. And of course, any investigation, any court case made against you then as a supplier of arms to Israel, we can use the UK as an example. Both South Africa and Nicaragua are, all, are already taking us to the ICJ for aiding and abetting Israel. Cases to be heard in due course. But ultimately, this means arms supplies to Israel, no matter who it is, no matter what treaty they may be signatories of, must cease with immediate effect. And anyone carrying on and anybody involved in that and anybody connected to that, financing that, will likely expect a day in the dock in future as well. This is one of the most sharply defined calls for cessation of weapon sales to Israel we've yet seen because there is clear risk they will be used in Gaza against civilian infrastructure and targets. As Palestine permanent advisor to the UN Riyad Mansour said the other day at the ICJ whilst 55 countries have been giving further evidence of the Zionism of Palestine, the decades of occupation there on Israel's relationship with international law. He said, they defy the law and the law is barely fighting back. Never a truer word said. For as much as our leaders right now this week are falling over themselves to blame Muslims and make Islamophobic slurs about Islamist terrorism aimed at MPs. This is what really should be being thrown at them, because they are barely fighting back against the oppressors. They're aiding them instead. They're doing so by continuing to supply arms to them and supplying political cover for them. And they need someone else to deflect public discontent onto to take the heat off themselves. So they're weaponizing another form of racism and saying to people, get angry at those people instead. Get angry at those in the street marching for an end to the genocide, an end to the occupation and a free and independent Palestinian state being set up. And we've got to stop falling for it. This UN statement is in stark contrast to Tory or Labour narratives now, for a reason. Because we have the worst leaders possible, and the UN is obviously right here. Instead of listening to our leaders, these prat-faced politicians that somehow keep wheedling themselves into power, we can expect further clampdowns on our freedom of expression, our rights to protest from whoever is in government, whichever one of these horrible bunch it is. So honestly, I don't think a day in the Hague for the likes of Sunak or Starmer can come fast enough because they're not going to shift. Arms sales from the UK to Israel should stop and must stop immediately. We need leaders that are actually going to do it, though. It shouldn't just be down to protesters forcing this narrative, We're trying to force change, forcing these factories to shut for a day here or a day there. It has to end as part of a boycott on Israel, as most of this country has clearly expressed in multiple polls that it wants. I can see such protests outside the likes of Elbit or whoever increasing. Heck, last month we saw four factories supplying the Netanyahu regime all get shut down on one day as a clear show of public anger over this, over our leaders' failures to uphold international law, our obligations under international treaties. And you can find out all about that stellar display of people power here, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.